If your kids still get scared during Disney movies, they probably don't need to watch you ruthlessly mow down enemy soldiers. Even if you think they're too young to understand what they're seeing, here are a few games you should definitely think twice about playing around the youngins. Surprisingly, we don't think Grand Theft Auto V was the most kid-inappropriate game of 2013. We'd argue that title actually goes to Saints Row 4, an open-world action-adventure from Volition. Before today, you were just the leader of the Third Street Saints. Now you're the President of the United States, you have superpowers, and it's up to you and your gang to fight off the alien invasion that threatens to end the world. Saints Row 4 delivers the over-the-top satire gamers have come to expect from the franchise, with a heaping dose of mature content thrown in for good measure. Hey Kinsey, you wanna f Let's go. There's plenty of profanity and buckets of virtual blood to go around, but Saints Row 4 doesn't stop there. The game also includes some creative blurring and even a weapon called uh, the Rectifier Probe. And yes, it does exactly what you think it does. It is an orange. Oh, I never drink the hate. Yup, in every country but Australia, you can use this baby to attack enemies or civilians from behind and launch them into the air. However, the gaming regulators down under decided Saints Row 4 had gone too far and refused to give the game a rating. Subsequently, Volition had to censor the game, making the Aussie version incompatible with international cooperative modes. Every version is incompatible with kids, though. Unless you want to pay for your child's therapy for the next 20 years, don't let them watch you play Heavy Rain. This 2010 interactive action adventure lets you learn about and track down the brutal origami killer, a pleasant guy who drowns his victims in the rain. While the gameplay style is more of a family-friendly interactive puzzle, the plot of Heavy Rain is definitely not appropriate for kids. There's a lot of graphic violence, sex, profanity, and drug use, but those aspects are only part of what makes Heavy Rain such a bad idea to play around your kids. Did we mention that all of the origami killer's victims are children? This game is just extremely dark from start to finish, and even though there are more than 20 possible outcomes based on your actions during the game, only one of them is positive. The other endings will likely leave you and anyone watching you play depressed for days. I can't pretend to know what you've been through, but I'm here for you. If you want to talk to someone about it, you know I'm here. Right, I'll, uh, I'll try again later on. Unless you're a PC gamer who frequents Steam's adult-only category, you've probably never heard of Honey Pop. One part puzzle game, one part that naughty, scrambled channel you and your best friends used to watch when your parents weren't home, Honey Pop looks a bit like a bejeweled knockoff at first glance. Or it would if it weren't for the busty women standing next to the game board, of course. Honey Pop is a tile-matching puzzle game with a built-in dating simulator. All your potential hookups in the game love collecting those little puzzle tiles. Take her on a date and you have to match up a set number of them to give to her before time runs out. You can also earn Honey Currency, which you can use to buy your date's gifts and take your relationship to the next level. This chick is clearly out of your league, but there may be hope. She's probably looking for a decent guy because of that baby mama drama. If you have enough successful dates in a row, you advance to the final bedroom game round. You can probably imagine what the prize is for winning. Although Honey Pop comes in both uncensored and censored versions, you definitely don't want your kids watching you play either one. When it comes to gaming with your kids, you should avoid any games that sell loot boxes. You get these virtual treasure chests by playing long hours until you earn one, or by purchasing them for real money. There's just one catch. You don't know what's inside. A loot box could contain an amazingly rare item, but it most likely doesn't. Your chances of scoring big time don't get any better when you strike out either. In many popular games, you can open as many of these consumable mystery items as you want with just the press of a button. A loot box is kind of like a slot machine with no guaranteed payout or regulations. Titles featuring loot boxes like Overwatch and Star Wars Battlefront 2 have made worldwide news as officials debate whether to make these mystery item microtransactions illegal. In the hands of a child with no impulse control, a loot box addiction could spell certain disaster for your wallet. Not to mention the possible gambling addiction problems it could cause for your child later in life. If you can't resist indulging in a loot box for yourself every now and then, just make sure you aren't buying and opening them when young and impressionable eyes are watching. 
Okay, okay, Mortal Kombat has been around for over 25 years and has never exactly been the pinnacle of family-friendly gaming, but a little bit of 16-bit blood never hurt anyone. Maybe parents would feel more comfortable allowing their kids to tear one another to shreds if it was done in a low, low definition that leaves a lot to the imagination. In the 90s, parents tutted over the red stuff, but the game was safely siloed away in arcades. When it threatened to invade homes through previously family-friendly avenues like Sega and Nintendo, then the moral panic hit hard. Ever wondered why ESRB ratings came from? Welp, the controversy surrounding Mortal Kombat was instrumental in their creation. Cold-Blooded Murder is making Mortal Kombat the most popular video game in history. Over time, Mortal Kombat only came to embrace the inventive finishers that made it a controversial series, safely and censored now that it was clearly labeled as a mature title. The better the graphics got, the more graphic Mortal Kombat became, from getting your head torn off to getting vertically sliced in two. It doesn't feel good to be a loser in a Mortal Kombat match. Mortal Kombat X took things to a whole new level and gave players an inside glimpse of the gore, showing snapping bones and flayed skin. Mortal Kombat 11 looks to continue the tradition of upping the graphical and gruesome ante. Should they pull out their opponent's heart? Or simply rip his head off just to see his spinal cord dangle in a pool of blood? How do you feel about cutting his head off? <laughs> The forest might be a bit traumatic for parents to play, because the main character is a parent himself. You watch as a son, Timmy, is ragdolled around in a plane crash and then taken by what can only be described as a flayed man. Talk about stranger danger. The player then must exit the halved plane and make like Lost, survive while unraveling the secrets of the island in search of your missing son. Naturally, the forest takes place on the least welcoming island possible, but who wants to wander around a tropical paradise besides this guy? This is the last job that we are ever going to pull. Before the year is out, we are going to be harvesting mangoes in Tahiti. The island is populated by cannibals who are sometimes curious, sometimes hostile to the player as they build their base, and they aren't afraid to straight up lunge at you at a moment's notice. Players can build fences and traps, but if they're willing to sacrifice a little sanity, another way to keep the cannibals away is by, you know, building effigies with their body parts. Further into the island, it turns out that the cannibals aren't the scariest creatures. Mutants made of too many arms or too many legs dwell in the darkest caves. The island had created these creatures from experiments with ancient artifacts meant to resurrect the dead. They could only be activated by the death of a human child. Timmy was used to bring back Megan, a scientist's daughter, but she's not quite herself. Acting as a final Boss, she mutates into a bloody mass of limbs. Once defeated, the player is left with a terrible decision. Will they crash another plane to find a child sacrifice for Timmy? Despite its name, My Summer Car is only partly about cars. Yes, the game is centered around building a car from the ground up, but there are many other factors that distract the protagonist along the way, like beer, or the fact that they don't actually know how to build a car. Or beer. Drinking and drinking a lot is a mainstay of the game. Players must carefully monitor stats, indicating how thirsty or how full their bladder is at all times. Should the latter stat reach a critical level, players are able to… uh, release anywhere, even in public. Drink too much in a full bladder isn't the biggest problem you'll have to contend with. Driving is hard, and still harder after 16 consecutive beers. Crashing and dying will wipe all progress the player has thus far. Kind of like real life. Also like real life, there are several options for shouting expletives or flipping off neighbors. Unlike real life, these actions don't have consequences, so be sure to separate the drunken, redneck world of my summer car firmly from sober reality. Usually, being scared by a game is kind of fun. Playing Five Nights at Freddy's is basically just a series of jump scares that inevitably dissolves into laughter. Slender could be enjoyed with a pack of friends watching the screen intently. The remake of Resident Evil 2 has spawned Let's Plays and memes galore. PT is… different. Even with a few well-placed jump scares, you're not likely to experience any rush of relieved laughter after what you've seen in that cursed, endless hallway. The game is easily one of the most disturbing psychological horrors ever played, using both audio and visuals to plunge the player into its claustrophobically small but demented world. The looping hallway, the radio crackling with tragic news, the flickering lights and slamming doors are all designed to set the player on edge, peel away at their sanity, and it works. In case it isn't obvious from the effed up fetus and creepy dead lady, PT is neither for the faint of heart or those who'd get easily startled by, well, this thing. You got fired so you drowned your sorrows in booze. She had to get a part-time job working a grocery store cash register. 
Known for its extreme levels of violence and gore, Rockstar Games' 2004 horror survival game Manhunt caused a fair bit of drama around the world. That controversy peaked after Manhunt was linked to a violent crime in the UK, banned in Australia, and confiscated by the authorities in Germany. But if this gruesome game was bad, its 2007 sequel Manhunt 2 is even worse. You play one of two characters in Manhunt 2, amnesiac mental patient Daniel Lam or psychopathic assassin Leo Casper. The game was initially given a rare adults-only rating by the ESRB, which would have effectively banned its sale in the US. Manhunt 2 is so violent, it's been banned in Britain. In fact, you may not want your kids to see the preview of this game. To get Manhunt 2 released, Rockstar had to tone down some of its most graphic details by blurring the screen during executions and removing the game's original scoring system, which rewarded you for committing particularly atrocious and brutal assaults. Even with the censoring, Manhunt 2 still received a mature rating, with some gamers considering it to be the goriest game of all time. Unless you want to traumatize your kids for life, save this game for long after they've gone to bed. And why anyone would want to play that creepy, disturbing game is beyond me. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more SVG videos about your favorite stuff are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.